the closing date. And full details on our website, mosthauntedlive.net. Good luck with that. Now, all this week at midnight, two members of our audience here at the Winter Gardens in Morecambe go on a very special vigil with paranormal investigator Phil Wyman. And we film it, of course, and we did that last night as well. Have a look at what happens. How are you feeling, first of all? Slightly nervous. Your heart's racing. Your heart's racing. Yeah, quite fast, aren't we? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, so I'd like you to kick off the ceiling, please. Any spirits that are here, can you please make a noise to show us your presence? Okay. Was he? Was he? I thought I heard the tapping, but he was behind. Thank you. Can you make that noise again, please? Was that your stomach? I know. That was a different sound, yeah. If that was you making that noise, could you make it for us again, please, but louder? There's a yeah. moaning yeah. sound in the moaning. passageway. Is it from there? I think it's through that door, yeah. Someone down the stairs. Oh, look. Okay. Oh, oh, so the stairs are so noisy. You want to hear somebody walking up the stairs? There's somebody coming up the way in. They're hollow. Oh, hang on. Look at that. Look at that. It was there. That was the noise. That was it, wasn't it? That was it. That was, that was what it was. Yeah. yeah. That was what it was. And there's obviously nobody down this end. And we've heard all the, the different moans. And, oh, I mean, great for the short time we've been here. It's, it's been fantastic for me. So, you know, to see that here on our own earlier, you know, to hear some of the things that uh, you know she experienced, mm -hmm. you can understand why she, um, you know, she kind of, you know. Call for a bit of backup pretty quickly. It's it's we'll not the nicest of uh, of corridors to be. So joining us on stage, Kate and Simon Stevenson, Black and Paranormal Investigator Phil Wyman. Good to see you guys. So, oh, my goodness. That was quite an experience, wasn't it, Simon? Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, to be there, you know, to see events earlier, and then, you know, to kind of witness it first time, it was, uh, it was quite special. Did you come to the show thinking, I hope they pick me? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. You know, we had a call during the day to say, you know, it might happen. Right. You know, it was a pretty big might, you know, to come to the show and then, you know, get given the opportunity to, uh, you know, to go on the vigil afterwards. So, fantastic. yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. What about you, Kate? Oh, what? it was brilliant. Yeah. Really, and, really I mean, the, the whole process of going out with, with Phil is... I can imagine scary to start with. I mean, did you have any second thoughts? Yeah, when I first met him, I had second thoughts. He's a really scary <laughs> guy. <laughs> no, but it was um, seeing, obviously, when we arrived at the location and we knew where Yvette had been, and that was then the choice of where we were going. It was quite intimidating. Yes. Um, but when you get there, you actually, you're more curious and you want things to happen as opposed to run away from them. So it was great. So, Phil, uh, every night we're blown away, aren't we, by our audience members going on this investigation because they're so good at it, aren't they? They are. It's fantastic because I can't believe how brave some of them are. Um, it was my first time on an event and a location that's supposed to be haunted. Um, I'd have second thoughts about doing it, to be honest. Do you give them any briefing as you go? Because obviously they're picked in the audience, off they go. What happens between that and when they, they land up in I, the I basically just have, a, I just have a chat to them about um, what their experiences are and, and the belief systems and hopefully, you know, not to get too worried if anything happens. Not to run away and leave me on my own. <laughs> did, did you think about that at some not point, once, Kate? No. Not once, no. right. So no second thoughts. No. What about you, Simon? Oh, no, we were, uh, I think we kind of, there was um, confidence in, in numbers, really. Yeah, yeah. Whilst we're all together, we're all safe and sound. Yeah, stick together. <laughs> so, Kate, take me through what happened to you last night and the things that you experienced. Um, I think the biggest thing for me was the, the way that it physically makes you feel, and that's not something that comes across on the television. You hear the noises, you know, you see the people's reactions, but you don't get the feeling, the physical feelings. Um, and the first feeling I had was just feeling sick along the corridor. And then as we walked towards the door, towards a larger part of the, the corridor, it felt as though, literally, somebody put 25 vodkas in you. 
So, Phil, is that unusual for, for sort of a, a newbie on an on a investigation to feel like that? Um, not, not at all, no. I mean, there are a lot of locations, and, and I'm sure Chris Conway would say that, you know, it might be a vortex, a spiritual vortex or whatever, uh, which kind of makes you feel a little bit like you've had too many um, shandies, if you like. Yeah. Um, and you were really feeling very yeah. ill, and she kept moving, falling backwards. We had to kind of pick her up kind of thing. Um, and it was fa fascinating to see. All right. Simon, what about you? What did you experience? I had a very intense headache to start with, and again, got this... You know, slightly, um, kind of, this wobble sensation. You know, we all had hold of each other's hands, we're all kind of pulling and pushing on each other. You know, it was a very strange, but it came on very quickly. You know, it was quite a strange environment. And to as be soon as you stepped out of that area, that feeling went, so... Would you do it again? Oh, Definitely. Yeah. In a flash. Good. Yeah. Phil, we're going to do it again, aren't we? Later, we are later on. Audience members. We are later on, so um, nobody's safe out there. <laughs> it could be any, any of you out there in the audience, so uh, watch out later on. Phil, thank you very much indeed. Kate and Simon, thank you. Thank you. Great to have you on the show this evening. Well done. Now, uh, the, as uh, we were saying, there'll be another investigation later on. Paul will be uh, announcing that between now and midnight, so listen up. And talking of Paul, here he is. Thank you, Julian. The clock is ticking. We have four audience members about to take part in a seance conducted by, officiated over by Brian Shepherd. Also, we have you at home. Keep watching the webcams. We want to hear from you the other side of this because the investigation is about to begin. The closest idea that we can talk about is this thing called psychopathy. It's something we can't necessarily diagnose. It's almost a character we can give to a person. Eight nights, eight faces of evil. So far, the team has uncovered the beast, the butcher, a brutal murderer, and a blood-soaked jailer. Who's waiting for them tonight? Welcome back to Most Haunted Live. We are beaming directly to you from inside this magnificent but now disused theatre. It's the Winter Gardens in Morecambe. It was built in 1897 but has been largely unused since 1977. It is a remarkable place. Our investigation started here on Saturday night and continues here tonight. Here's just a little bit about its history. If you walk in on your own before I put the lights on, I feel as though there's something you know, I look behind me because I feel as though there's something behind me. One of our members is, was a non-believer, and uh, now on a Saturday night, we open up the theatre to the paranormal groups. He was terrified one night, and he, he came from underneath the stage, in the room underneath the stage, and said, I'm a believer now. He said, I've just seen something there. I can't uh, describe really what what I've seen and, I, and there's no explanation for what I've seen. This is our 16th Most Haunted Live that we've been involved in. I have to say this is one of the spookiest venues we've actually been, had to work in. Um, a lot of the areas, as the building is completely derelict, are completely dark, there's no electricity, so when we're working under the stage, it's just horrible, it's creepy, there's noises, it's wind blowing through. Uh, it's really not one of the nicest venues we've worked in at all. There was a gentleman uh, called Harry Smirk and he was the manager of the theatre. He smoked a cigar and sometimes uh, one of the bars upstairs in the dress circle people walk in and said, oh, I can smell cigar smoke. Up in this part of the building um, quite a lot of people um, have noticed the smell of tobacco smoke. Um, I've witnessed it myself on this level um, and obviously we've had to look into that because um, laws say that people aren't allowed to smoke in buildings but upon investigation there's, there's actually been nobody up here. There's supposed to be a stage manager that's not very nice and, uh, and people have experienced things as though they've, he's throwing things at them and apparently one of the stage managers was, was quite a nasty man. Every night on stage I've heard noises behind me, not from the crew, not from the audience, I've heard things dropping, things tumbling, and once or twice I know things have been thrown from behind me. It's very difficult not to get caught up in the emotions of the audience, not to get frightened at times. I have to kind of keep delivering the links and saying what's coming next, but when you're hearing odd things happening around you, or even occasionally at the corner of my eye seeing things, seeing strange figures or just shadows, it's very, very hard to keep focused. It's a well-known fact there's something in the Winter Gardens. Oh, come on. Yeah, that was good, that. Oh, that was snatched out of our hands. 
and watching that with us is the chair of the Friends of the Winter Gardens. They have made us incredibly welcome here. It's the lovely Evelyn Archer. Good evening, Evelyn. Good evening. And what's it like for you seeing this magnificent building, absolutely beautiful building, which has been falling into a state of disrepair since the 70s? What's it like for you seeing it full of people like tonight? Paul, I just can't describe it. I mean, when you've when you've fought to save a building for 23 years and then to see it full of people, it's just amazing. Especially when you think it's heartbreaking to see it empty, when you think this is what it was built for, this is what this building is for, and it should be in use and part of the community.